In this movie we're going to discuss another part of the config uh, file for i3 on Linux Mint 18 Cinnamon. We are talking about this config file in your home folder, hidden folder config, i3, the config file. I've opened it here on the left. We scroll up or down, but we end here somewhere. We have here lines, startup applications you always use. There are background applications you want to start. There are applications you want to float. And there are three applications you would like to start. And if you reboot, if you start your computer for the first time of the day, it will automatically start Firefox, Sublime Text, Evolution, not because the there is a hashtag in front, but Spotify, Nemo as well, and um, the Conkeys. So let's go over it. This is here a program to make sure that my numeric path, which is defined if you do not have it on your keyboard, it's on the right with all the numbers, that it's uh, really on. So numlocks is a little program we installed during the procedure and it's telling to be on. That's it. So we can use the numbers. This here is um, something well something that the diehards of tiling managers will say no that's not a tiling manager but you are free to use the software the way you want it and some of the programs i've made it floating enabled and this isn't at the moment since there's a hashtag in front and others are enabled so you can choose yourself and i'll show you how so like, uh, for instance, this GNOME disks, what do you do? You press Windows D, you type GNOME disks, you'll probably recognize it. This is the program, press enter. This is GNOME disks, at the moment it's not floating, meaning it's tiled, so 50-50, each uh, uh, gets the half of the screen. When I press another Windows enter, it's going to be divided in three and in four and in five. You've seen that. That's styling. So Windows Shift Q, this gone, my mouse hovers over the correct window and Windows Shift Q. Okay. What happens if I do tell the, the system here to float it? Control S, Windows Shift Reload R. R means that it's also going to focus Firefox. So getting back to here, Windows D, GNOME disks, when I enter it, this is what meant by floating. So it has no fixed place, it comes on top of everything else. It has even a little shadow, but it's not a shadow actually, it's the border that becomes black. What can we do with it? Well, we can move it out of the way. We can press the MOTS key, the Windows key, and at the same time, a left key with the mouse and move it there. You can minimize it and make it a bit smaller, stuff like that. Or you just press Windows Shift Q again. So that's the result of our action here. And hashtag or no hashtag, Control S, Windows Shift. R reloads. So that's the issue. Then there's another question, of course. How do you know that? How do you know that this is that name and so on? Let's do this with another program like this one. There are classes you can have, there are window roles you can have, there are instances you can have, and uh, a window role like pop ups of preferences or setup. Some of the programs get that, like uh, one of the movies is VLC. Then you have the preference uh, pop up. I can show that, that's easy done. So Windows D, VLC, voila, VLC is started. But I told VLC when you start, go to 7. So now it's on 7, workspace 7. And when I ask the preferences, this button here it will float windows is pressed now and i can put it anywhere i want so this is 
the name of this little window here. How do I know that? You press Windows Enter. You get your terminal, you type in xprop. And then you get this mark, this plus sign, and you shoot at the window that you want to figure out. And then it says here, let's change wallpaper. No. I want the dark wallpaper so you can read it on uh, YouTube later. Yeah. Okay, let's pause it. I'll get you a better wallpaper. Okay, this one is better. So what do we get here? We have here class and string. And there is the name, there is the instance, and there is the class name. Let me check so, so I didn't say anything wrong. I quickly went online, went to the i3wm.org, and then the word is instance, and what is the following, what is the order? The first part of the wm class is the instance, so the first one is the instance, and the second part is the class. So sometimes the two, the names are different, so the instance has this name and the class has this name. In our little example, it has, there's no difference. So you can ask, you can tell it the instance is VLC, or you can say the class is VLC. So the first one is instance, second one is class. I'll probably forget it, but you know, it's on the internet. So that's how you figure out how these names are. When you put these little signs in front of it and the dollar uh, behind it, it means it has to be exact that name. And GNOME disks can be GNOME disks with some text behind it or in front of it. So anything with these words will be okay. But this should be exact, should be exact, VLC, etc. Okay. So you can figure out what a window is via Xprop and then declare it to be floating or not. That's one part. Second up is what do we start? We want our tray applications. Like, let's look to the right here. This, no, let's start with, this one is the bar. It's just uh, the I status bar, explained in another movie. This one is sound. Sound is faulty. Faulty is taking care of all my sound settings. So if I go to the preferences, you will see, let's cancel this one. This is not floating and these are the sound settings. Kind of changes. So this is faulty. This is my simple screen recorder. This is a, a network interface, up and down, meaning this is this one, network applet. Variety is a program restart for the wallpapers. You see a wallpaper here. Let's change the wallpaper. There you go. And then this mint screen Mint update uh, icon. So check if everything is up to date on Linux Mint 18.7. And our little VLC because of my program that's open, mod shift Q, it's gone. So actually, the Dropbox is interesting, but then this is a test PC, so I won't get my gigabytes on this one. And then the rest, when I put in the power button on in the morning, what will it do? It will execute Firefox. On top here, I think it's on top. It's going to say, ah, you're executing the class of Firefox. Great, I'll send it to Workspace 1. So it's going to be to pop up here at 1. What will it do? Also, it will start Sublime Text. I don't want the mail as now, but so normally it will appear in 9, workspace 9. Spotify will appear everywhere it wants. You have to move it to 10 or another, the way you want it. And then Nemo goes to workspace 8, and all the conkeys, which you see here to the right, will be started as well. And you can, of course, edit them and change them so you have more shortcuts. And um, that's about it. Um, maybe this as well, and then we into movie. This one is also interesting and has to do with applications. Meaning, let's delete this one. 
meaning I have made Control Alt F's. So Control Alt F starts Firefox, Control Alt G, Jerry and Evolution, Spotify, and Sublime, and Nemo, the GNOME system monitor. We can try it. Control Alt M. So you saw it. This is a floating thing. So I don't know if you like it or not, but you can make it unfloating. Why is it floating? We explained in the movie. It is must be somewhere here in the code that this uh, element is yeah, GNOME system monitor. Let's quickly do it. So Windows Enter, Xprop, Enter, Shoot, and then you find the mod. Let's move it away, and you find the information: the icon name, string, icon name, system monitor, system monitor, and here is the class. So remember instance and class, but the only difference is a big G. But you know, in Linux, that is. A a capital G is not uh, is a totally different name yeah so that's important to write with capital letters or not instance class all right that covers everything I think up to here so this is as all to do with uh, applications there are some other smaller uh, shortcuts like the file manager and the cinnamon settings so Check them out.